Okay, I've plopped the entire Fox into a cardboard box. This is uh, one of the boxes I get my, my capes back from uh, the tannery. And what I did was I cut a, uh, I made a little cutout in the one flap and I was able to pull the neck through. And that supports the entire head. I injected the nose a little. The nose has gotten quite dried out over the past couple of days of filming. And I'm going to mix up the amount of um, alginate. It's a 50-50 mix, 50% alginate, 50% water. It's a very thick, creamy stuff. First thing I'm going to do, I'm going to cut this flap here so it will rest behind the head. And yet I want to fold this over so no alginate drips in on the body and everything else. Like so. There we are. And that gives it a good, good amount of support. All right. Now, I want to make sure the mouth stays closed. So I brought out a little bit of CA glue. And I'm just going to put just a touch, just a pinch at the front of the mouth to hold the mouth closed. This will let go once I start skinning. I'm going to put a little bit on the front lip. Just a little drop of CA glue on the front lip. And just a little drop on the side lip flaps as well. Just a teeny, 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 teeny drop. Okay. Now I'm going to put the lips into position and hold them for just a second or two. Like so. Now I'll mix up the alginate. Okay, what I'm using is the Genesis X prosthetic grade alginate. Sold by the Brick in the Yard Mold Supply. That's called, also called Bitty, B-I-T-Y, Mold Supply Company out of Texas. I used to use a dental impression material alginate, but uh, the dental supply place by me has since closed, so I can no longer get it. So I got this from Brick in the Yard, Mitch Rogers, the good buddy down there. And uh, he, as I, I said, from the look of it and the description and the directions, it sounds like the old alginate I once used in the past. So I'm going to go ahead and try this. I've got an aluminum scoop. I bought a bunch of aluminum scoops for doling out, measuring out plaster and whatnot. I've got a flexible rubber bowl filled with, well, the water was cool when I brought it out a couple of days ago, so <laughs> I'm just going to have to go with this for now but I'm going to mix this up until I get a nice creamy consistency and uh, we'll see how we'll see how it goes after it's mixed up it should be just fine I ordered five pounds of it because I've got quite a few death masks and things I want to do now alginate is actually made from brown algae seaweed so now I'm mixing this into the water the same way plaster is in, you're instructed to mix plaster by adding it to the water and I may need to add a little more water this looks really really thick this soaks up the water really really well now there's plenty here I can cover this fox in one coat looks like let me add some more water to my mix sometimes you just have to do it by eye measuring doesn't always work the nice thing about the um, the dental impression material alginate was that it had a minty flavor to it a minty aroma this this has no aroma to it 
I'm going to make this a little thinner still, just a wee bit thinner. Okay, now. Oh, that looks that's going to go on nice. That's going to go on nice. I'm not using any separator. Um, I don't think the fox is going to complain if some of its hair gets pulled. I don't think it will pull it out of the out by the roots, but when you're doing prosthetics on people and you're making casts of faces, life masks in that case, and uh, hands, you want to be sure that the, um, yeah, just a touch more water, I think. You want to be sure, this is really thick stuff. You want to be sure that, you know, you have a separator on, on the human being, on the living subject. This subject, I don't think she's going to complain much. Okay. Let me get this mixed up real well. And I'll come back to, I'll be covering it when I come back on camera. I want to get it really thoroughly wow. well mixed. This, now this stuff is really thick and creamy. I want to make sure every square inch gets covered. It's not really, it doesn't look like it's going to be sinking into the hair anytime soon. I can get some of it into the ears. I'll see if I can get at least the front of the ears as part of this mold. All right. There we go. Oh, yeah, this is nice stuff, man. This is really super nice stuff. It's super, thanks for asking. Now, alginate will only stick to itself when it's still wet. You cannot stick cured alginate that's already set, cured, it will not stick to itself if you do that. It will peel away from itself. So I'm going along here. I want to get this all the way down the size of the face. I'm letting the weight of the alginate do the work for me. I just don't want it to pull away from itself here. All right, so now I'm going to start applying it and pulling it up. I'm going to reapply it to the nose, for example. Let it drape over the nose. Like so. Let it drape over the face. Start pulling it up a bit. See here. I'm going to pull it up. I want to make it good and thick. Gravity's really starting to work against me here. It's starting to pull it away. So I'm going to keep adding it and bringing it up as I do. Now this stuff is being put on rather heavy. I'm not surprised it's all pulling down the way it's doing. But once it kicks, it will, it will set. That much I know about alginate. Once it kicks, it's set. She sets. There's no messing around, no, no funny business with it. And I think it's starting to kick. It's getting real thick. It's getting real thick now. It's like uh, really gooey pudding that you wouldn't want to eat because it's so damn gooey. <laughs> I should have had something along over the edge over here too. All right, let's get this. Whew. It's funny, this stuff almost smells like a, an animal that's been in the fridge for too long. Alginate. That's what it smells like. It smells like an animal that's been in a refrigerator for too long. I'm going to get this back into the container. I want to eliminate some of the weight, so I'm going to take what's dripping and get it back into the container. 
so it stops pulling on the fox's face. It stops pulling it away. Okay. Let's add some more here. Oh, it's running out. It's running all over. It's running all over. Now, while it's this thick and starting to kick, I'm going to try getting it onto the other ear as well. Try and straighten out this ear. Oh, she's dripping all over the freaking place. Okay, well, it's all right. I bought it to do this, so it's going to do it. Let me get some behind the ear as well. This way the ear will hold up. There we go. Nice and nice. Nice and nice. Let me get the, keep the dry stuff from getting wet. <laughs> Please. But yeah, that's what it smells like. It smells like an animal that's been in the fridge for too many days. Small animal, nothing large. Whoa, whoa, whoa. All right, let's get this back in here. <laughs> Running down the side of the box is trying to make the great escape. All right, let's trim it off here. Let's have a nice clean edge if I can. Yeah, I think I might have mixed up a little bit much. But that's okay, baby. Put it back onto the nose. Roll it around. I want a nice thick layer of this stuff. Now I can tell you the dental stuff, I think if I remember correctly, used to set up quicker than this. This is a really, really slow set stuff. And I, I'm glad I did not use refrigerated water. I used to use refrigerated water with the dental alginate because it would set so quick. That's why it also, it had to set quick because people didn't want it in their mouth very long. So yeah, it would set up rather quickly. But uh, yeah, it's made from seaweed, more correctly brown algae. So hence the name alginate. She's starting to set up now, for sure. Yeah, it's beginning. It's beginning to stay where it's put now. Certain songs in my head, and they're stuck there. Rita Coolidge. It's running again. Come on now, set up. Don't aggravate me. Set up. If you use warm water, it will set quicker, by the way. Some of the instructions on this. If you use a warmer temperature water, it will set up quicker. I used water that's been sitting out here in the building for a few days. Uh, we've had temperatures in the 60s and 70s. Oh my goodness, it almost fell off, off the side of this here. Oh, terrible, terrible, terrible. All right, back onto the nose. I 
And I'm going to use regular plaster of Paris to make a mother mold for this. You could use plaster bandages. I've, I also have um, burlap. I can cut strips of burlap if I want to reinforce it. But I don't want to reinforce it. This, this is going to be pretty close to a one-shot mold. I just want to get a quick impression death mask from this animal. Just a real quick impression mask. Death mask. All right, now we're really setting up, baby. Now we're really setting up. Okay, I think I'm just going to keep working this off camera, and when we come back, we'll pull the uh, we'll pull the death mask off the dead fox. And uh, fingers crossed, kids. It's the first time I'm using this product. Not the first time for Alginate, but the first time for this brand Alginate here. So, yeah, fingers crossed. Okay. Looks like it's really starting to set up. Yeah, it is. It is. It's just starting to set up. Nice. Very nice. There we go. And next time I do a death mask, I'll use warmer, warmer water. Yep, it's done. Stuff in the container is completely set up. All right, well, there's the fur. Oh. Okay. Okay, she's set. She's setting. I'm going to let this cure a little more, and then I'm going to uh, mix up some plaster and make the uh, make the mother mother mold in plaster. Just a real quick plaster. All right, got a nice thick mix of plaster here. It's just regular plaster of Paris. Not molding plaster, just plaster of Paris. This is the, I think the DAP brand. Yep, DAP, DAP. They make spackling compound, all kinds of stuff. They have a nice creamy plaster of Paris that they, that they produce. I don't know if it comes from Paris, but it's Plaster de Paris. Oh, Plaster de Paris, Plaster de Paris. He spoke French, help him. All right. Don't get sloppy now. You just got it on the handle of your nice big boning knife. Don't make a boner mistake again. Now, I want this to be really thick. All right, so I want to give this alginate mold plenty of support from the outside. I think I'm going to go ahead and pour the casting out of plaster. I'm gonna, I'll put a wire hanger in it and from the wire pla uh, the um, plaster casting I can then make um, a silicone mold. If it, if it turns out good enough to reproduce I'll make a silicone mold of the plaster casting and uh, Put it on the market if anybody wants it. If not, I'll have a nice or a semi nice gray fox death mask to hang on my wall with my other death masks. I want to get the ear section plastered. I want to keep the plaster off the hair of the ears that's exposed. I just want this to contact the alginate, that's all. I don't want plaster on any exposed hair. There is a little bit on the very, the very tips of the ears did not get covered. This was a real, real quick, quick put together mold. See now the dental impression alginate used to hold like the plaster. See how the plaster is going on, it's staying in place, it's not really running. That's the way the dental plaster used to be. And I used to slow it down, like I say, by adding uh, cold water from, uh, from my refri refrigerator. 
All right, so if the ears are part of the mold, cool. If not, no matter. I know they're there. This is mostly for the face. So I have a three-dimensional uh, go-to, three-dimensional go-to reference when I'm sculpting. At least gives me the the proportions proportions of the animal's face, the head, and face. It's not really meant to capture a whole lot of features. It may have, it may not. I don't know. It. it um, I've not used this product before, so I'm really uncertain how it's gonna, how the finished product is going to be. I'm gonna get the plaster as smooth as I can, just so there's no sharp edges to grab me. I'm always getting boo-boos. Seems the older you get, the more you're prone to boo-boos, the more boo-boo prone you get. So I just wanna get this smoothed out a little bit. It's one of my favorite application tools is this old butter knife I liberated from my kitchen years ago. Does a great job. Puts plaster and mache right where you want it. Now, if you're looking to make a death mold from silicone and you want a good solid product for a mother mold you can use hydrocal you could use number one molding plaster and reinforce it with either cheesecloth or that's all I'm going to do on that right now either cheesecloth or burlap or you could use a product called Durham's rock hard water putty and that works exceptionally well and here it is this is very underrated product has a lot of uses in taxidermy Duran's rock hard water putty it seems to be a plaster and dextrin mix all right i let the plaster really set up uh, so i'm gonna go ahead and pull i'm gonna pull the mold off the fox I don't know how this is going to come off. I don't know is I don't know if let me cut this away from the cardboard first so I can pull the cardboard away. Pull the cardboard away from the backs of the ears. There we go. That's good. That's good. That's good. All right. Now we have it running down here. So let me just slice the edge here. Take that away. Boom. Okay. Now. Let me lift the entire thing up. See if we can pull the whole thing off the fox's head. Okay. Pull the plaster mold off, the mother mold off first. Let's get the plaster mother mold off. Come on. Just gotta unhook it. Alright. Okay, baby, let's get your ears out. There's your ears out of there. Come on, little girl. Look over your ears. There we go. That's one ear. Let go. Pull the other ear out. There we go. There's a good little girl. Coming out slowly. No slippage happening on the ears. Yay. That's good. That's always good. You gotta get them out of here. Little by little. Piece by piece. Brick by brick, my citizens. Brick by brick. Plaster's, okay, the plaster came away. That's fine. Put the plaster aside. Let's just put the plaster aside, plaster mold aside. The mom mold, the mother mold. The mother mold.
Okay, now I'm, now I'm going to work this away from the fox's face. Now without the plaster on it, I've got a little more flexibility. This alginate is more flexible. Now yeah, it has grabbed hair, but I don't think it's going to... Now if this was a living fox or a human being, this would be rather painful pulling this out of here, but being it's a dead animal, I'm just going to get under it and work it away from the hair, the fur. I'm just anxious as all get out to see how this came out. All right, nice and nice and slow, nice and gentle. Come on, baby, let it go. Oh, there we go. Oh, look at how clean she is. <laughs> And fluffy. All right, here's the inside of the mold. Okay, and we've got ears. Okay. They tore a little bit, but that's okay. I, I needed to get that out of there. Now I've got a little bit of, looks like I had an air bubble trap, a little bit of uh, alginate. Now I'm going to lay the alginate mold in the plaster mother mold, get it all back into position where it's supposed to be. All right. Now, <laughs> I'm going to cut this part off. This looks like just, a, I'm, I'm just going to trim it up. I'm going to trim it up a little bit. <laughs> these these don't, don't need to be here. These extensions, I don't know what the hell this is. I get this is where just it leaked underneath. <laughs> Pretty nasty. No, <laughs> it's not nasty. It's okay. Now, I can put this in a plastic bag and put it in the fridge for a little while. But what I'm going to do, to avoid any problems, I'm going to try and seal up the outside here where the ear tore. And I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to put plaster inside. I'm going to put plaster in the mold. First thing I'm going to do, I'm going to set this in something to hold it in place. I'm going to hold everything in place. Make sure this mold is sitting in the plaster properly. Now, let me get this set up here real quick. There we go. Okay. Now, I'm gonna I'm gonna get my little girl out of out of this. It's, it's like she's like she's in stocks now. You can see how the lips come right apart again. Remember, I had uh, I had secured the lips with uh, CA glue, and they've just come apart really beautifully. I can see in the mold that the mouth was held shut. Very nice. I got good nose detail in there too. So happy. Okay, baby girl, we're going to take this off of you. I think I'm going to put her in the fridge for now. I'm just going to pop her into the refrigerator. Uh, I'm going to make the mold. I'm going to make the casting. Then I'm going to uh, take her out and finish skinning her face. Now I've gone ahead and I've shaped a little, this, I think this is a 18 gauge wire, a uh, little hanger that will come out of the back of the plaster. I'm going to mix up the plaster, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to give kind of a splash, splash coat to the mold, let that set, then I'll fill the balance of the mold with, uh, with the rest of the plaster. Okay, first thing to do, I'm going to put some, some plaster up into the ears. I want to seal these little areas up here. I want to seal this, where, especially where I tore it to get it apart. I'll let the splash coat of plaster seal that. And any of that's out, I can simply shave it away at a later date. But I'm getting plastered up in there. This is, this is a fairly thin coat. This is a really basically a splash coat. Just to coat everything, really. Okay. Now we splash it around. I want to make sure it gets in all the, the depressions under the ears. 
like so. Make sure the ear is sealed up. And it'll leak out of the ears for a, uh, just a little while until, until it begins to settle up. Solidify up, rather, I should say, really. I'm not worried about it leaking out. That's what a splash coat is for. You can let it leak out. Now I'm going to put it, I'm going to further splash coat the inside of the entire mold at this point. I'm going to get in here, I'm going to fill it around, not all the way. I'm going to coat it. I'm going to first knock out the bubbles by tapping it. You see bubbles coming right to the surface, I hope. But then I'm going to go all around the edge of the mold. I want to coat plaster. I want the plaster to coat everywhere. Just like so. Now, with the, whoops, with the old butter knife, I'm going to move it around. I'm going to get it everywhere I want. I want to get it everywhere. Zip, 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 zip. Doesn't matter how thin this initial splash coat is, it really doesn't. Once this firms up, the heavier uh, permanent layer of plaster will be applied. I, I, I want to get the plaster everywhere. I want to coat everything here. Like so. I want to get this everywhere. Yeah, get this in here a little bit. All right, there we go. Now, put that down. We're going to move it around again. Okay, like so. I want to get some. I want to get some more plaster up into this ear section. I want it to fall, but I, wanted, I do want to get plaster up in there. I want this solidified, like so. Make sure that the air bubbles are broken. Okay, like so. There we go. All right. I'll put it back like so. Here we go. All right, let me, I'm just going to wipe this off here with my finger. I get somewhat neat edge if I can. Like so. By neatening up the edges, you have that much less that will possibly break. Now, this is a temporary mold, okay? This mold will be broken away from the plaster in order for the plaster casting to survive. This is just plaster of Paris. This is not grade one molding plaster. This is not number one molding plaster. This is just plaster of Paris. I could have poured Durham's rock hard putty, except that the container of rock hard putty I have has gone rock hard over the years of sitting out here in the shop. Not used. It must be used. I say it's sort of a Durham's rock hard putty to me appears to be a plaster dextrin combination product. Now, I don't want to touch the inside of the face. What I am going to do, again, I'm going to just tap it ever so lightly. Now, I did not powder the inside of this mold as I usually do 
when I make a uh, urethane casting in a silicone mold, I will powder the interior of the mold with baby powder, which is cornstarch. Or you could use regular talcum, it doesn't matter. of this in, concentrating it on the ears primarily, surround the base of the ears. Now it will take longer for the thinner stuff along these walls to set. It will not build up its thermal properties will not build up where it's thinnest. I just want to make sure I pop all ear, air bubbles, ear bubbles, air bubbles, including those in the ear. Make sure that the plaster really gets into the details of the ears. Speaking of the ears. Okay. This is really firm stuff, I and mean, this almost feels like, like a, a firm rubber, like a urethane rubber almost. This is really good. This is really, this is some tight stuff here, man. This is some mighty tight stuff. I just want to make sure it's sitting evenly in this container down here. There we go. I want it to sit evenly. Set, sit evenly. Don't know if it's thickened up enough yet to, for, to warrant putting this in. Well, it might be. And get a little more plaster in there, I think, first. We'll get more plaster here. There we go. Now let's put the hanger back in place. I'm just going to put a little craft stick over the top so that it's not laying flat against the mold. There's a little gap here, like so. This will at least start to secure it in the plaster, and the plaster will set around this. And then when I add more plaster to it, why that will just truly lock it, lock it all together. It'll lock it all in place. Lock it all in. Oops. I don't want that on the plaster. Well, well, well. What you want and what you get are two different things, doggone it. Eh, whoop. Okay. There we go. Nice and nice. This way now it's not too deep in the mold. Now, this will set. And when it's fully cured, I'll come back to the sucker and uh, top it off with plaster. Okay. I've really built up the back of this, uh, the back part of the death mask. I built it up nice and thick. I built it up very thick out behind the ears. Okay, hopefully you can see the thickness here where the ears are located. 
very thick. It's so rich and thick and chocolate. Okay, now this, this last, this second pour of plaster was made much thicker than the first. So this will ensure a good heat buildup for it to set. And the heat that this generates for, for this setting will also help f firmly set the thinner stuff. That's going to take a while to set. I may not demold this for a couple of days because you can see as I press the hard, the stuff that's on top, I'm getting a little light disturbance here from the stuff that was already in there. I'm trying to blend it together to help it all set. In fact, I'll probably bring this into the house overnight where it's warmer than it is out here in the building. Much warmer. And uh, I'll let this stay in the mold overnight. Um, in the meantime, uh, we're going to get to skinning the little girl's face and head, head and face, and get those features done so she can go on the, uh, she can be beamed, get the heavy fat off the skin, and go onto the salt rack and be stretched out and dried for the tannery. But here we are. This is the uh, death mask to this point here. I say I'm going to let this thoroughly, thoroughly set. I may leave this set. I may leave this in the mold for a couple of days. You will see the end results, but I want this to definitely, definitely set. So it will have to set at least a couple of days, and I'll check it and make sure. Later. All righty then. Here is the death mask of the gray fox. This is what's left of the mold. Let me bring this over here. Like I said, the uh, alginate is a temporary mold at best. And you do have to kind of peel it apart to get your casting out. But that's okay. I mean, it starts to dry. It's very brittle after a day or two. But I know it looks, it may look a little funny to some. Let me point out a couple of things here with it. When you're sculpting, especially, a death mask is an invaluable tool when you're sculpting. Besides giving you an overall uh, dimensions of the face and overall size, what I want to point out quickly is notice when you look from above, you have the shape of the muzzle, the bulge at the zygomatic arches, okay, you have the width of the head behind the eyes, you have the width of the muzzle above from the side view all right what you've got well you've got the details you've got the zygomatic arch you've got the cheek details showing you've got the depth from the nasal ridge down to the jaw you've also got all the other measurements that were taken on the face that are marked on the chart now what I will do with this I will go ahead, I will uh, allow this several days to dry, it is plaster, I want it to fully dry. I will then give it three or four light coats of clear shellac to fully seal it. After that's done, I will go over the ears, I will remove these little bumps that were caused by, um, those are air bubbles that uh, were in the mold. I will rebuild parts of the ears that are missing. I will then trim this down here. See, this is very thick along this edge. I will trim this down to match the edge of the ear. And after it's dry, it can be ground away. And that's what I will do. I'm going to even this. I'm going to even off the flare around the face. Uh, make sure it's balanced. Make sure it sits level. Then I'm going to go ahead and make a silicone mold of this and uh, produce copies for the market. Anyone interested in a Gray Fox death mask? I'll have one available within a few months. So, onward to the project at hand.
Oh, 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 oh,